I have a capability, which I don't know where it came from, but I have it to sort of imagine myself living in these environments. How would I like to live? And for me, you know, I think there's things that you do that sometimes you're motivated by the simple design, the, the design itself, the opportunity is really exciting. But in this situation, it was also a place that for me to be fortunate enough to design in the center of town and one of the more iconic buildings in a place that I loved, in a place that I'd spent a lot of, of time in, was really a thrill. Klein and I had an affinity. We knew each other socially, but also then we had done a few projects that never had come to realization together. And we had a comfort level with each other from a social interaction. Clients always come to you when you start to build that confidence and they always say, look, if there's something crazy that I want to do. And I think, yeah, of course, you know, if you want to do it, we can figure out a way to do it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think people who have the comfort to me, it's a great sign when they have the comfort to share some fantasy in a way that we're able to realize. You know, it's cool. I like it. It's fun. My excitement also grew in the fact it was just a white box. We could kind of turn it into what we wanted to. What I thought was, was really critical was how we used materials to, to give it a unity. So it's not, it's very unified. So even though it's a large home, we use materials consistently and it unifies a lot of the, the spaces. We weren't trying to make it playful, but we used color very judiciously and very critically in terms of balancing out certain intersections between architecture and decoration and other things like that. You can be there in the middle of a really beautiful sunny day and the materials just luxuriate. They become very sensuous with all the sunlight and all the, all the movement and the air around it. But you can also be there in the middle of a snowstorm and it doesn't feel cold or oppressive or you know, that, you're, that you're somehow in an igloo. One of the secrets that I find in the work we do is we take often a very prominent individual in a very conspicuous site and when you are there and when they're there, they feel very unselfconscious. Using this home in Telluride as an example, you could be there for weeks on end and no one really would really know you're there. You're right in the center of town, you know where everything is, you know what's going on. But once you're in that home, you feel secure, you feel elevated, you feel you're, you're kind of out of the activity. And these are, these are subtle attributes that design can achieve. I think a lot of people think, oh, that isn't, that sounds like an emotional state of mind, but I think physical space can support that. I would guarantee you that anyone who's been in that room and kind of spent a little time there would have a very clear memory of that room. It has an impact. You walk away remembering that room and those spaces and this location.